It's a rainy morning at camp. I thought it'd be a good time to um, update you on my eating while I was at the Gulf and some tricks I've had for dealing with restaurants and my doctor's appointment. So I went to the doctor, probably it's been about three weeks now, maybe more. I don't remember the day. It was before school got out. I'm a teacher. So I went to the doctor and my doctor, as I knew, wouldn't be helpful at all. He just said, um, he was okay with renewing my budesonide for another six months because I'm doing well on it. But he's not a good doctor and he's not very friendly. And I have a better, a new doctor I'm going to at the, on August 24th. So I knew that. So I was okay with just telling my doc, that doctor, the GI I'm seeing here that, um, I was still doing good on the budesonide. So he would renew it because I knew I needed something to buy me time until I see a better doctor. And he doesn't really care how I'm doing because I can't hardly eat anything. And when I went down to two budesonide, all my symptoms came back even though I'm only eating a few things and I'm working with a nutritionalist. So um, if I tell my the GI here that I'm only eating a few things, he gets really grouchy with me and says that food doesn't matter. I should just um, eat whatever I want, eat even gluten and kind of like, he just gets mad at me. It's like, oh, you must be having, you must be drinking energy drinks. You must be having caffeine where I haven't had caffeine at all. Like I have my tea here and it's herbal chamomile organic tea so you know that's like the most crazy I go so there's just no working with him because he gets such a bad attitude toward me if I'm not doing well or if I tell him the truth about how I can't hardly eat anything he gets mad at me and says I should be eating everything other than dairy caffeine and raw vegetables every other thing on earth including gluten i should be eating and taking the budesonine so i'm taking th the full dose of budesonine every day and with that i've been able to tolerate very few foods but at least i am tolerating some foods and luckily now i can eat fish and maybe all along I could, I just had to gradually try different things. Well, one thing I found out early on, which was, okay, it's almost July, so I was diagnosed about seven months ago when I got really sick and lost a lot of weight and they did a colonoscopy. And luckily he had sense enough to check for microscopic colitis. So, I got diagnosed, the Pepto-Bismol treatment did absolutely nothing for me, which I didn't think it would because I've been dealing with this for five years and getting worse and worse. But the budesonine helped as long as I only ate a few things. If I try to add another thing back, like on Mother's Day, I had eaten three bites of lamb and chewed it really, really well. And I had horrible stomach pains and felt sick for three days. And my loose bowel movements came back. Everything came back. Well, but then it went away because I didn't eat anything else. Usually it'll go away within three or four days if I try something and it doesn't work. And then I get back to my real safe diet. Usually I will be back within three or four days of feeling good if I'm just not eating anything hardly like limiting my my to my safe foods but one strange thing about me that's been difficult for my nutritionalist and she is out of London by the way um and she has pretty 
pretty high certifications. They're a lot more strict there than they are in the United States to become a nutritionist. So one thing that's frustrating for her and for myself is if I eat something, it's usually, if I'm trying to introduce a new food, it usually takes three or four days before all my symptoms come back, but then they do. So I can't just usually try something and then instantly know if it's affecting me, if I can tolerate it. Usually I have to try it day after day after day after day. And it's usually the third or fourth day when suddenly I'm just back to, you know, even on the budesonine, I'm back to full symptoms. There has been a couple times when I noticed it right away. One was the lamb chops when I had a few bites of that. And another was one time I was at, well, was at our property in a different town and went to a market to get some organic vegetable or fruits to put in my smoothie. Usually at home, I use frozen strawberries, banana, and my protein powder with a can of coconut milk, unsweetened organic coconut milk. And well, they didn't have a bag of just strawberries that was organic. So I bought, I don't think they had a, a choice that because it was a health food store, it was natural brushers. So they only had organic and they only had blends. So I bought a blend that was strawberries, bananas, and mango, because I thought, what's a little mango? I'm sure that's not gonna matter at all. And I put that in my smoothie, and it wasn't even a lot of mango, just like a couple chunks, and I had like horrible stomach pains. I had to wait several hours to be able to do anything because I had such horrible stomach pains. So on occasion it's instant, but usually it's gradual, like trying to introduce eggs. It was a gradual, gradually over a few days, my symptoms all came back. But the first few days they didn't. So I thought, oh great, you know, maybe I can tolerate eggs. Same thing with, what else did I try like that? Oh, rice, oats. All those things were gradual too. It wasn't an instant thing I could tell. So anyway, when I went to Gulf Shores last week to the ocean, I wasn't too nervous about it because we we're staying at a condo and we were driving. We live in Arkansas, so we can drive there in a day. Um, but on the way there, we did stay at a hotel and on the way back, we always come straight home. And the reason we do that is because you can't check into the condos till 4 p.m. And usually our experience has been they're not ready even at 4 p.m. when you get there. Either there's a nice cleaning lady and you're bringing your stuff in while they're still cleaning, while they're finishing up, or there's a not so nice one that's just like, you know, too bad, it's not ready yet, I'm behind. And you, you have to just kill some time. So usually we leave and do the drive in two days. Like my husband will work half a day because we go in the summer when school's out and we will, he'll leave work like at noon and we'll drive part way, like somewhere in Mississippi, but Mississippi is not very safe to stay. So usually like Tupelo and that's a safer place because it's Elvis's birthplace. So it's a more of a tourist area. So usually we'll drive like this time we went to Tupelo and then spent the night there and then got up the next morning and drove the rest of the way. So when we did that, I always make sure the hotel has a microwave, which I'm sure they all have microwaves, but it's nice to also have a refrigerator. So what I did was I had my stuff for my soup that I eat, my safe soup, which is not a lot of broth. It's mainly meat and vegetables now. So I will have that in a thermos, which I take to work in a thermos every day also, and eat that in the car and then have a little plastic container of it. And I can put that in the refrigerator and have some to heat up, the, have it for dinner that night. And then to heat up the next morning, 
I bring a bowl too to heat it up in, to heat it up the next morning so that I can put in the thermos for the rest of the drive where to get where we're going. And I also bring my Vitamix blender and my frozen strawberries and a can of coconut milk and my protein powder and a banana. And that's something I can whip up at the hotel, dump into my two smoothie cups and have one in the morning and then another one when I either, when I get there or in the afternoon before we get there. So that's plenty of food, plenty of nutrition for the day. One thing about the making the smoothies though, is it's nice to have a hotel, the one we stayed at last time in Tupelo, actually had a little like kitchenette and it was much easier to wash my smoothie contain my smoothie blender, what do you ever call it, the thing you set on the on the stand. Because it's kind of hard to fit to clean that out in the little bathroom sink, but you always could just kind of give it a little rinse and then wash it when you get to your place. So anyway, that's what I do at the hotel. And that's the kind of food I bring to make at the condo. But once I get to the condo, since it's Gulf Shores, there's lots of fresh places to get fish. There's fish markets. So we'll go get fish like we got trigger fish, red snapper, um, mai mai last time. And took that back to the condo and just baked it in the oven with some olive oil and salt and had that for dinner along with my same vegetables that I put in my soup. And I can also have a sweet potato or a regular potato. Any potato so far has not bothered me, luckily. So we don't eat out too much when we're there because Gulf Shores, now this would be different if you're traveling somewhere else, but it's such a crowded area that you have to wait so long to eat every because everybody wants to be at the beach all day and then go eat. And so you have to wait so long. We would rather spend our time on the beach and in the condo and just hanging out. Maybe we go out to eat once or twice. We always have the idea that um, we're going to leave the beach early, like at three and then go get cleaned up and go eat at four, which we did one night and we only had to wait like 45 minutes. So, but it's easier said than done because when you're out there on the beach, having a good time, you kind of want to just stay on the beach. You don't want to go back early and that's why nobody does that. And everyone goes uh, later at night to eat. <laughs> so anyway, one time we did go, the one first time when we did go out to eat, I didn't know if I was going to eat anything. Usually I'll have a couple of my applesauce packets in my purse so that I could just have like some ice water and act like I'm sharing. That's what I do. I'll say, oh, I'm sharing with my husband, you know, and just kind of pretend I am, even though I'm not, because I don't like to talk about that I can't eat anything. Well, I want to just enjoy myself and not talk to the waiter or waitress about food choices since there's pretty much none. So... I do always have that in my purse so I can go enjoy myself, have a good time, and then just not eat the food. But this time, since we were t by the beach and there was seafood, there was crab, which is always safe because I've noticed the good thing about crab, even if they season it, you can pretty much break it open and get the meat out and it's not going to have seasoning on that. So this this place though had a lot of seasoning on the outside from the season, the boil they used, but they gave you a lot of those hand wipes too, because it was pretty messy. So what I did was broke it open, and then which of course my husband can break it open too. But I kind of like choosing crab because it kind of takes longer. So it's like while everybody's eating all their different things, you can be just messing with your crab, breaking it open, eating it, and it takes longer, so it kinda 
you don't like get done first or you're not just sitting there not eating while everybody's eating. So I broke it and then I wiped my fingers real well on the little cloth and then I grabbed the meat and ate it. So I wasn't transferring anything from my fingers onto the pieces of meat. And that worked well. And I don't think I ate any of the potatoes at that place or anything else. I think I just ate the crab. And that was, I had no trouble at all from that. And then the only other time we went out to eat the night before we left, we went to a seafood place that had, um, they're mainly known for shrimp. That it was kind of sketchy because it was lots of shrimp and fried, mainly fried shrimp. Now I did eat shrimp that we bought at the seafood market and it just cold shrimp that they had on ice and you could, they would devein it and they, it was devein, but you had to like take the tail off, but it already had the shell off and everything at the seafood market, it's always better to pay for it that way, especially when you're on vacation because you don't want to spend time per getting it all deveined and peeling all the stuff off it. But I ate that cold. Everybody else made shrimp cocktails with it. And I just had mine with, what did I have? Avocado chopped up and the shrimp. And I guess that's it. <laughs> nothing else I could have. So I guess I had those two things for my shrimp cocktail and that was really good. And I've never had any trouble with shrimp. So the, when we went to that restaurant though, it was more like fried shrimp and that's what they were known for. People could get crab and different things too. And at that place they said, I asked, do you, can you do any grilled fish? Can you grill your fish? Because they had white fish. That's just what it said, white fish, but it was fresh. And they said, I said, do you have a, an area where you could clean the grill and just grill it and no seasoning at all? If you don't have olive oil, just, you know, nothing, just cook it up on there. And he said, yes, they had some olive oil and they could do that, no problem. And they could give me some boiled potatoes that are just red potatoes that they boil in water with no seasoning because they season them afterwards. So that was really nice that he offered up the red potatoes because I was assuming that any of their stuff there would have seasoning or had butter on it or whatever. And so when I was talking to him about the fish, he offered up, hey, I could also do you the potatoes, which are plain. And he brought me that and that was fine. I had no trouble with that either. But whenever I say I have no trouble with something and I'm doing that kind of thing, in the back of my mind, I also know that I'm on full strength budesonine. So I don't feel like these kind of choices would be a good idea to do all the time. I don't know if my body really could heal enough and tolerate Mm, how, you know, how would I know if maybe there was a little bit of some kind of other something on that fish? I didn't get sick, but I only had it one time. And I don't know how clean their grill really, really would be from any contaminants. Where if I do it at home, I know 100% that it's safe. So that's not something I would just continue to do. And doing it that one time at that place, I felt a little guilty about like, maybe I shouldn't have even had it because I am not drug free. And I actually, when I tried to go down to chew budesonide, and I, I made it, I did good for like seven days. And I was actually wondering at the beginning, probably even of me talking on these videos, I didn't know if budesonide was helping at all. I kind of felt like, you know, it's probably doing nothing for me. I'm taking this drug, it's doing absolutely nothing. I still can't hardly eat anything. And I don't even think it's doing anything. But the way I knew it was doing something, how I found that out was I went down to two. 
when I went to because I was like, I'll just taper off it. I'm going to see a better doctor in August. I'll let him prescribe me something. But when I tapered down to two, I did good for like seven days. I'm thinking, well, I probably don't even need that stuff. It probably never helped me at all. But then uh, by like the eighth, ninth day, all my symptoms started to come back. So I was like, crap, you know, that sucks. And so got back on to taking three because I am really, really strict with my diet. And I just need to keep doing what I can to heal my body and also work with the new doctor when I get to see him and hope and pray that he's going to actually help me or get figure out if I have something else also going on. So that was pretty much what I did at the golf. Now another thing I did and was I did have an alcoholic drink where I hadn't had that. I'd experimented one time just because I wanted to know before I went on vacation um, if it would make me really sick. And so I had experimented with some um, um, now, my nutritionist had said, she did not recommend, of course, that I try any alcoholic drinks, but I was like, look, you know, I'm going on vacation. I've been so strict for seven months and I'm all, I still had to get back, stay on full strength budesonine. I just know that I'm going to want to have an alcoholic drink. You know, I'm going to want to have some drinks while I'm there. And I just want you to advise me on what would be a good choice because I just know I'm going to do that. I want to live my life. I want to heal, but I am living in the real world and I, I just wanted to do that. So I, she advised me that if I was to have something, wine, wine would definitely not be a good choice. It would be, and of course not beer, which I wouldn't even have considered even a gluten-free beer. But she said spirits, that's what she said, um, being from the UK. And, she, and so I said, okay, like what kind? And she suggested maybe I would try gin, vodka, rum, something like that, that was more pure and not mix it with anything except sparkling water because I can drink sparkling water and maybe a little bit of something to flavor it that is not sugar and it's not artificial but sugar would be preferable to something artificial she said so when i experimented at home i tried a little bit of gin sparkling water and organic maple syrup just a tiny bit and it was fine i had no trouble so that was my little experiment and when I was on vacation and we were at a place and I was wanting to order a drink, they didn't have sparkling water. They only had club soda. So I'm Googling club soda. Well, it has other things, you know? So I was like, okay, no. So I told the guys like, do rum, ice, water, and a little bit of mint sprigs. Because I've had a little bit of mint here and there not mint sprigs before, but you know, I've had like mint tea and I didn't have any trouble. So he did that and then he had some strawberries and he put a couple of chunks of strawberry in there. And that was really good, that was fine. And so I had no trouble with that. And so I had that a couple of times when I was there. I go to a different place. So then the next time when we were going to a place called the Gulf that's on the water where you can watch boats go by and stuff, and they have a full bar there. Um, the next time I brought some of my own sparkling water in my purse, like the Perrier with the lid, I just had that in there. And then I had him, um, then I drank some of it down and then I added, got more ice and added that to it. So I didn't have much alcohol, but I added that to it to make it last longer. And that's what I did. So that's pretty much all I did. And I didn't drink very much. And I could, of course, not have a drink. But my family is very 
they all drink when they're socializing and stuff. And it's just kind of fun to have a drink since I can't eat anything they eat really. So that went well and I had no trouble with it at all the whole week. I probably had, um, most days I had a drink. So probably over the course of the week, I probably had six or seven of those. And even over the whole week, it never bothered me at all. Not even a little bit. Um, wine is my drink of choice. And I'm not the type that has to drink. Like, I go years and never even have a drink. It doesn't bother me. But this is a type of social thing where I would like to have a drink. Now, wine would be what I would normally like. I like wine a lot. Red wine, but that's not a choice. So this was new to me, trying something that had hard alcohol in it and I didn't enjoy it as much as drinking wine like I don't even know how to explain it but it was fine and I had no trouble so I don't think I felt sick the entire week at the Gulf but like I said I was very very careful I just ate my normal foods um I've been taking a Benadryl every night a clear Benadryl tablet to help with my itching because I have so much severe itching and it seems like that could be a histamine thing from bananas and avocado. But my nutritionist, I was going to, you know, not eat those. Well, she did not like that idea. She's like, look, I would rather you take a Benadryl. Just, you know, wine is enough to make me not itch at night so I can sleep. She's like, I'd rather you took a Benadryl than quit eating bananas and avocados. She said, you get such little nutrition to begin with that's some of the only foods you can tolerate and I don't want you taking them away and going back to less foods because it is such a gradual thing adding foods to my diet before I went on vacation one thing I tried to add was spinach I cooked it real well and added it to my soup that was another one I did good day one I did good day two I did good day three and I didn't go crazy I just did like a tablespoon of chopped spinach, like cut it up with scissors, boiled it for a long time, and then put it in my soup. Day four, my symptoms were coming back. So that was really annoying because I was trying to get another type of nutrition in my diet and that didn't go well. But I might try it one more time. So when I do have, um, try something and it doesn't go well, the problem is it takes another three or four days for my body to get back to normal and feeling good. And then, you know, I might want to try something else. Well, you have to pick, what do you want to try next? So she's wanting vegetables as her number one thing. Well-cooked vegetables with no skin, low FODMAP. Those are the ones she wants me trying first to get more of a variety of nutrition in my diet. She's okay with me being on my ground turkey. Oh, I did try some ground venison, just like a tablespoon a day added to my soup and, and that's working. So that would be a great thing to transition to for another protein because I can't get turkey here that is not injected with rosemary. And I looked online at ground turkey and you can order it, but it's really expensive and you just get like a little tube for like nine dollars well i eat like six pounds of ground turkey a week because it's one of the only proteins i eat i usually have that every day for lunch and then for dinner i have fish so if i could transition to half and half venison um we can we're arkansas people we hunt and that's something we can have that is safe I do worry about, you know, so many people bait the deer with corn. It's frustrating, you know. So I have to weigh that in my mind, but still I feel like maybe venison, even if it's been baited, if it's probably ate corn from people, you know, roaming around the woods, it's still probably better than they inject the turkey that's injected with rosemary and who knows what else um, it says on the pack. It says rosemary what's it say other natural flavor I don't know um 
people have questioned that maybe that's not good for me to have because I have it every single day. So, meaning like on the forums. So that could be hindering my healing because by seven months I should be able to get down since I've been so strict on the budesonide and I can't. So that was working okay, the venison. So I am going to try to, I don't like it as much because I'm so used to the ground turkey, but if I put a little bit a day in, I'm hoping I can transition where I'm doing venison in the next six months. And the fish for my protein. So she's happy with my proteins, my nutrition list. She's like, you can do those proteins, that's fine. Um, I'd rather, instead of you trying to play around with proteins, I would rather you add um, vegetables, more vegetables, because that's where you're gonna get more nutrients. I do take, because of my blood test, nutritional panel, I do take powdered calcium every day, because I can't tolerate a pill. And it took two powdered ones to find one that didn't upset my stomach. So a powdered calcium a day, every day, D3, and a net, an omega by the brand One O N E. That's very pure. Um, what else? Oh, curcumin Val, which is a supplement, and I take that twice a day. I think that's all I take. I'm supposed to soak in magnesium baths, which is harder in the summer because I'm not, I'm traveling more, but. I have the magnesium spray, but when I spray it, it always makes me itch really bad. So when I am home and during the school year, I was soaking two to three times a week in my magnesium bath. And when I did go home Sunday, because we're camping local, I did go to my house to do some laundry Sunday morning and get some more food. And I did soak in magnesium bath that time. So I think that's all I'm doing for supplements. She really wants me working on food to get my nutrition, not to start taking a bunch of supplements. Plus supplements are hard on me to tolerate also. It was a lot of work to find a calcium powder I could tolerate. So that's what I'm taking and that's what I'm eating. And my vegetables right now are the same. I mean, I can repeat it because you might not listen to my first video, but I do carrots that are steamed, peeled and chopped and steamed, potatoes that are peeled and chopped and boiled, or I can just have a potato. I really wanna experiment with cutting them and roasting them like um, Jojo potatoes, I call it here, but no seasoning, nothing, just olive oil and salt. The problem is it's so strange. I haven't heard other people on the forum saying this. The problem is when I add anything that's cooked more, I can't tolerate it. I instantly feel sick. Like I cannot tolerate it. It does not make sense to me. I can't eat a potato chip. If I eat a potato chip that's avocado oil, organic potato chips, I get like a tightening in my throat and I just feel not good. So it doesn't make sense to me that I can only have it if it's super soft. Like, what, if my body can't tolerate something, why would that matter? I'm going to have to ask her to explain that to me a little more. Like, why can't I digest it? And she did say she wants me, she didn't like me having my all my vegetables and meat only in a broth. She didn't want my body to get used to only having it like a soup. And I do have very little. The reason I put the broth on it, which is a bone broth, um is because to heat it up, when you heat it up, it's easier to heat it up in a bowl because I'm going to dump it in a thermos to take with me or even to eat it. It just heats up better if it has a little bit of liquid in there. That's the only reason I use that broth still. I do need, I'm do. i going to try to get away from that. Or anyway, you know, it's always something that makes it more difficult. So I do eat zucchini peeled and steamed in my, I call it soup, but in my whatever, my lunch. And that's all. I tried the spinach. Every time I try adding another vegetable to that, it hasn't gone well. I tried, but that's the number one thing she wants me working on. And I am working on that. I did try a fruit. She doesn't care so much about me adding fruits, but I did try a piece of watermelon 
And my problem is the symptom I get from eating fruit, any type of sugar, I tried watermelon and within like three hours, I had a very itchy bottom and I get a lot of rectal bleeding and a lot of itchiness down there. It's, I don't know. Within a few hours, that was my symptom from the watermelon. So, and it seems to be any type of fruit or much or sugar. I do my Simply Gum and my Simply Mints, which is um, very few ingredients. I do okay on that, luckily. I was doing my Ginger Chews, which was such a treat to have those once in a while. I got the itchiness. Any fruit at all gives me the itchiness. I, other than um, my strawberries, but strawberries really aren't sweet. I put my smoothie frozen strawberries and they and they're not organic. I just buy the big bags of the cut up frozen strawberries from Walmart, like a six or seven pound bag, and I go through two of those a week. I spend a lot of money on my supplements and my coconut milk that I order off Amazon and my protein powder. And I just, I mean, I don't want to spend every single penny I have. Well, you know what I mean? I'm already spending like $350 a week just on that stuff I order or buy. And, you know, I don't know. I could go all organic strawberries, but my nutritionist is like, look, just buy the big bags of strawberry. It's fine. Put them in there. Make your smoothies with it because each little bag's like $5 and you get this tiny amount, like one smoothie. And I get that big bag for like $7 um, and it makes lots and lots of smoothies. So anyway, I'm going to end this because it's getting really long and I'm sorry about that. But if anybody's wanting to information on someone else's microscopic um, colitis, I just wanted to share this because when I look online, there's not a lot out there. Just doctors that, say, that are not helpful and doctors that say, you know, diet doesn't matter, which is so stupid. So anyway, good luck. And when I know more or have more to report, I will post more, but I think that's all I'm eating right now. And I guess I could do one and show you like the protein powder and stuff that's helping me. So maybe if we have another rainy day at camp, I might do that. But I'm trying to think if there's any other food I'm eating. Oh, I can tolerate squash, but I don't like it. I get no enjoyment from it. So my nutritionist was like, that's okay. You know, you're eating sweet potatoes and zucchini. So if you don't like the other squash, don't make yourself eat it because there's very few foods. You you know, you have to get some enjoyment out of your food. So on occasion, I will make a squash and eat that. But I really don't like squash, like butternut squash or summer squash or spaghetti squash or any of those. So that's another food I've been able to tolerate. Um, I really think that's it. Applesauce. I do unsweet applesauce. Could bake an apple. Um, that's just not that exciting to me. <laughs> so, anyway, that's it. And please share your story if you have a microscopic colitis story. And I do have lymphocytic colitis, if that matters. And my grandmother had Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Um, if that matters to anybody. I feel mine definitely came on when I contracted C. diff. It brought back, it brought those genes into play in my life and it's never been the same since I got C. diff, contracted that five years ago. And I got worse and worse every single year. And I restricted my diet more and more until my body just rejected everything and that led me to the doctor. So, have a great day.